Hey, Robbie. I need dice. You were nothing to have any. First drunkenness and now gambling. Pin egg. Pin egg. I could find some, but it won't be for free. Lend them to me, out of old friendship. <laughs> Will you do something for me too, out of old friendship? It's Lent, and I'm craving fish. Bring me some fish, and I'll lend you the dice. Jesus Christ be praised, Dobyaslav. Mm. I need a fish. Do you have any? I'm going fishing right now, but I'll be fishing for myself and my people. You and your friends won't get any from me. I've seen you fraternizing with Robbie. I wouldn't have shat myself because of the spoiled wine the other day if he was doing his job right. Have some porridge. I'll be going again. Mm. Hey, Henry's come to see us. Have you found that sword yet? And you? Have you quit drinking, Henick? <laughs> all right, all right, you win. I feel quite hungry. Go talk to Robbie over there. I'm sure he'll find some porridge for you. Thank you. I knew you'd point me in the right direction. Hi, Random Innkeeper here, and today we look onto the porridge which Hinek sent Henry to eat and what to do with the fish he ought to find. Searching in the old cookbooks, I found a recipe from late 15th century for wine porridge, starting simply with pouring the wine into the pot. Add cinnamon, nutmeg, and a bit of ground ginger to warm you up. Keep cooking on a medium heat and reduce by a third to evaporate the alcohol, so the porridge won't taste as distillery essence. When there's no trace of alcohol smell, thicken the wine with the white bread. As much as you want the porridge to be thick, correct the amount of the bread that is gonna melt inside. When satisfied with consistency, sweeten with honey, again to your liking. Serve the porridge, decorate with prunes and sprinkle over some crushed or ground almonds. Doesn't look that bad after all. As for the fish, Hinek managed to get this nice trout. And since we are in Silesia, I picked up a recipe for a Polish style fish from the cookbook by Paweł Rodowski, again from the end of the 15th century. Scale the fish and cut off the fins. Take a flour. Season with salt, pepper and ground ginger. Cover the trout in it completely, that will ensure nice crunchy crust on the surface. Season the fish on the inside as well and stuff with herbs such as parsley, dill, thyme, whatever you got. I would add some lemon as well, but since I am in the Husit camp in Silesia in 1428, I will have to omit that. Put some parchment paper in a tray, drizzle with oil and place the fish in. Drizzle again. Place into the oven on 200 degrees of Celsius and bake for 15 to 20 minutes depending on size of the fish. Heat up some oil in a frying pan and fry the onion until translucent. Then pour in some... yeah, my camera went off. Pour in some red wine and season with cinnamon and nutmeg. See, I'm using the very same ingredients as in a porridge. Keep cooking until onions are very soft and then mash with a fork or pass it to a sieve, or blend it. Thanks to the onions, you will get nicely thickened sauce. Season the taste with salt and pepper and add prunes, which you have cut into smaller pieces before. Last but not least, let's make some garnish for our dish. <laughs> that rhymes. Slice the onions into thick slices and break up the rings using your fingers. Coat the rings in the flour mixture you mixed for the fish, but preferably before the fish. In another pot, heat up enough lard for frying and fry the coated onion rings out in golden and crunchy. This will require some practice, because the onion keeps cooking for a while even after you take it out. Remove onto the kitchen paper to drain the excess fat. Pour the sauce onto a plate and proudly lay the fish on the top. Look at the crust! Decorate with crunchy mountain of onions and there you go! Polish style trout from the end of the 15th century. Thanks for watching and see you next time!